as a small dealer under $5 million, if I, uh, I were to diversify with one product or service in 2024, what would that, what would you suggest? One thing that we've noticed in the last two or three years, kind of right after the pandemic started, but before it ended, whenever that was, um, there was a, an enormous resurgence in uh, people keen in managed print services uh, into Google and looking for managed print services. And since we've been covering managed print services for 20 years, MPS has been kind of uh, one of our, our, our um, key topics of coverage. Um, and we have an entire publication that was focused around it. Uh, we found that really interesting that there was this renewed interest in it. Uh, and that's holding up. Uh, it's, you know, a, a different type of management services than it was 10, 15 years ago. There's a lot more uh, resources available and technology to help offer a really modern uh, new vendors, modern um, solution. I think I would say that a a, a new look at managed print services uh, and how you're offering them and who the vendors are out there right now that have some interesting solutions. If if you're if you don't feel like your managed print services business that you have within your dealership is really um, performing, uh, or if you don't have one, I, I think that is a really good place to look, uh, either uh, start or retool, because uh, there's a lot of new uh, ways uh, to offer that service uh, that are uh, much more frictionless uh, for you as a dealer um, that do a lot of the heavy lifting on the billing side. Um, there's a lot of opportunity, I think, there. Uh, and there's people on the outside also looking for managed print services. So uh, the customers are are looking to manage things in those in that one bill. So I think that that's something we're taking another look at. If you haven't looked at it in five years, uh, take another look at your what you're doing for MPS because uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. I think. Um, and then the other one is kind of off the range, um, but. <laughs> I, I, last year, you were at a lot of dealer conferences, and uh, I was at quite a few of them as well. And I saw questions over and over again about physical security systems. Uh, so a little bit on the facilities management side of things, uh, but uh, multiple dealers were talking about how they were really um, seeing a, a good sales and profit in offering physical security. So I think there's something there because it came up quite a bit. And it also came up when other dealers were talking to dealers. So then other people started asking me, uh, uh, several of the OEMs offer uh, different uh, opportunities and solutions for physical security. And it looks like that's really getting some lift. I think, you know, around manufacturing environments, physical buildings, keep in mind uh, that not everyone goes into work anymore all the time. So some of these buildings are uh, probably not as visited as they once were, and maybe they need a little bit more security around them. Um, looks like there's some opportunity there. And I do know, like in our, our I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, our uh, cable provider, everybody loves those, is Cox Cable. People hate them, but um, Cox Cable competes against the dealers by offering telephony. Um, they offer physical security services. They offer, so there, there's a convergence there somewhere. So that might be worth taking a look at if you're in the $5 million range and you haven't taken a look at that. Um, I know several dealers um, are selling uh, physical security and doing very well. Um, some big ones, but also some $5 million ones. Can't tell you how much we appreciate having you, Patricia. It was an enjoyment for me to sit here and listen and keep my mouth shut for a chance. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy listening to you, Frank. So I, I'm taking that as a big compliment. And thank you both for hosting me. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.